Greg. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities in Music. Today, guys, we're going to review, start off our set of ten, one of the last sets in this beautiful studio. Um, uh, that That is kind of crappy, actually. Yeah, We're ready to get rid of it. We should do like a video tour of what, what the area is actually. That's like, a promise. Like. We will do a yes. video tour because this place is ghetto fabulous. <laughs> Anyways, the album we're going to review tonight is Washed Outs Within and Without. This is a brand new debut album from a young man from Georgia named Ernest Green, um, who's put out over the past couple years a few EPs here and there, been buzzing around the blogosphere. Everyone's talking about Washed Out and what Ernest Green has done starting from his parents' bedroom or a bedroom at his parents' house, mm -hmm. um, and he's essentially what he's made, what I can tell is that he's prepared for us a very multi-dimensional electronica synth pop effort, and I think that Tom and I have discussed this, and we feel like this is the best way to describe what this album is, multi-dimensional electronica synth pop. Um, and, and really what this, what this focus is on is a lot of just very highly, uh, thickly produced textured synths mm -hmm. and vocals that are multi-tracked, multi-layered and processed in a way that is just this wall of sound approach to electronic underneath in the mix. Right. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to hear his vocal. Uh, it, it, you can hear his vocals, you cannot hear his lyrics, you cannot hear what it, um, Ernest Green is singing about, um, which, which I like. I find that to be alluring, but some people might get turned off by that. Mm -hmm. That could be a barrier to entry for some, some folks out there. That's gener generally the sound. It focuses on mood and composition uh, rather in and, and composition on the song and as, as the album, but these things are, there's nine tracks, it's a little bit longer in track length, yeah. um, not quite as poppy um, as some of the other um, uh, other different artists across the electronica, uh, huge genre, not the subgenre, but that's the general sound of things, it is very much so an album listen. So, Tom, mm -hmm. with, with that description, what, what, was your, what was your reaction to Within well, Without? On first listen, what I noticed was, you know, go, going into this with a, with a chill wave mindset, which yeah. I, don't, I don't even know how much I like that word, but I'd heard, I'd heard that be, uh, that descriptor used on this artist, so I was like, I was going into it with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but once I got into it, I was like, you know, there's actually a lot more variety in the sound right. in both influences of older artists and uh, contemporary artists that I would compare this to. I listened to this and I'd hear spots where I thought that sounds kind of like Fantagram, maybe Panda Bear, um, you know, maybe some Moby, mm -hmm. uh, both old and new, mm -hmm. some Toro y Moi. Mm -hmm. And so I like that it's not one dimensional. There are a lot of different aspects to the sound here. At the same time, I don't think he pushes it as far as he could. It's still kind of, it's in that acceptable zone. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the reason I started out with such a compliment towards that is because I think he does it far better than many in this genre. Uh, but still, he could do it a little more. Right. At the same time, though, this is a first effort, and I think just the way that he has focused this and been able to incorporate those different aspects of the style mm -hmm into a flowing album and not have it seem forced mm -hmm. is good. Yeah, it's absolutely. Good. It's, it's such a, f uh, a fantastic foundation for a mm -hmm. debut album to really have something this cohesive, this thick sounding. I gotta say, my favorite aspect of this is the production. This, yeah. this, and, and, and I agree with you in all those assessments of the bands, but I even throw in some of the, you know, the synth pop, you know, disco revival bands that are out there right now, like Cut Copy or Holy Ghost. And, and, and my favorite aspect about those bands was always the, the production, the production. Yeah, how beefy yeah. it was, how the beats just, you know, just are so firm and just pound your face off. I love that. And this takes it to the next extent because this, you know, has all the textures, uh, the synth mm -hmm. textures, electronic textures, and it also has the vocals that are so processed and everything is so full and, and bold. Um, and, 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 Electronica that experiences a failure to bold is just a, a damn fallacy in my mind. Yeah. So this is the furthest thing from that. I really appreciate that. And that's what's great about the production is you think about, like, like Holy Ghost. You use that example, so I'll right. use that as a foundation of my analogy here. Uh, but Holy Ghost, everything was so thick and it was great. And they did that because, you know... The, by, well, the way they did that was by having less reverb. Right. And here, it's like they are able to get, or he's able to get the thickness mm -hmm. of the beat, but still have all the reverb surrounding it. Because a lot of times when you drown things in reverb like that, get mm -hmm. that washed out ah, sound. Oh, ah. I had, I had, how could I not? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. it was too tempting. But, you know, to get that sound, a lot of the time the reverb kills the thickness and the punch yeah. of, of all the instrumentals yeah. and beats that you have going on. But here... It's a really, really great balance. Yeah, of and, it can, and it can also sacrifice songwriting. 
Yeah. Which I don't think, and that's one thing I really liked about this album, is the songwriting and how the songs are structured. It's mm -hmm. aggressive, the longer track lengths, the, 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 just the structuring of it, the fact that they can, he can do song shifts in the mid-song and, and take this thing into a completely different direction or drop some beats out for a little bit, almost yeah. like a dubstep sort of um, take on a song for just a mo brief moment and then switch back. Mm -hmm. I really like stuff like that. It keeps things much more interesting than some of his uh, fellow genre mates. Um, Album structure, mood. This thing is just the chief of album structure yeah. and mood. The nine tracks are, are divided up very nicely in place of what they're going for, the overall mood of the song. Um, it, it, they don't keep a lot of them together, with the, the exception of the last two tracks, which takes this album into kind of this more personal yeah. dive, you know, with this... You know, the last track, a dedication track nine, is this lo-fi kind of produced. It's produced differently than the rest of the album, and it's this uh, lo-fi kind of piano re recording that I think just sounds beautiful, and then he adds in all the synths on top of it as the song mm -hmm. goes on. What a fantastic, moody way to close this thing, and it really puts an emotional tinge on this album that I, I just kind of fell in love with. Mm -hmm. But you definitely jump my score on the album, Tom. I'm thinking 84. 84? I'm going to go 81. Okay. This is good. What do you guys think about Washed Out? Please leave us a comment about this debut LP. I want to know what you guys' thoughts were. www.velocitiesandmusic.com, youtube.com slash velocitiesandmusic. Facebook, Twitter, do it. You know you need to down there. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.